going to pick up where we left off a couple hours ago. I had to go eat. Um, but I uh, got a really good start on, uh, on, well, I've got one complete and half of another one done. So I'm going to pick up where I left off and carry on. Right now I'm just putting the uh, reinforcing on. So come on, why do you want this? kind of pretend to be um, technologically illiterate, but I'm actually not. Well, I like to think I'm not, but I don't know why I'm seeming confused. I guess I'm distracted. Anyway, your channel. All right, come on here. Let's go here. Give me the link. Copy. Okay, the top messages. I'm going to filter it so we get all messages. And there we go. All right. So it should be uh, up to date. Let's put a cooler picture on. How about that? And uh, I think I do want to get the. Uh, well, no, I need this. You, no, I want something different from the background. Oh, look at the other things. Let me find a good. Uh, I have any good pirate pictures here? Let's see what we've got. Sailing? Oh, flags. That's a long one. I'm going to bring up those privateer flags again. Um, let's try this one. I haven't looked at it. Although, you know what? I'd rather see use the, uh, all the other pirate flags for now. I think we're going to put that up. It's cool. Little screen free. How about that? And that should do it. Alright. So let me charge my thing and uh, let's get to work. Alright, I got the chat open. I've got the stream going. I've got my sewing. Work is cut out for me, as they say. Here we go. A few stitches and I'm going to There we go. It's like riding a bike. While I was sewing these, I was thinking it was kind of coarse and sloppy and stuff. And then I threw it over the chair over there and went and I ate and came back in and I looked at it and I was like, damn, it's really, it's a lot finer looking than I thought. There's a lot of stitches in this. pretty cool and it's going to hold up. Not that these are going to see any use as real pirate flags, unfortunately. I think the days of 
sailing sloops as pirate vessels are probably all over. I wonder when the last black powder piracy occurred. I mean, there's always a last time. I was watching a, I was a video on, uh, on YouTube, this chick, uh, Eva Zubek. She travels all over the world. She's Polish and takes her Land Rover all over the world. And she was in, you know, like somewhere in Montana or something. And uh, we got in the middle of nowhere, this tiny little place, like a little town. It's really hard to get to, I guess. And I think one of their claims to fame is it was the site of the last stagecoach robber. It was like 1910 or something like that. And someone's got to be the last. We were in the last piracy by sailing vessel was. Although, if it's just a sailing vessel, then it might be pretty recent, you know? I mean, you gotta figure somebody on a yacht pulled a gun and robbed somebody else, so I guess that counts. But I was thinking of, you know, old-fashioned sloops and stuff like that, but, but really, I, I don't think a sailing yacht would count. Damn it. No, I hate it. Tangles up, man. There we go. We broke it. But we didn't high. All right. Let me trim this up. Put a new thread on. It's one thing I don't like about this thread. It snaps and tangles up. I really like the. I like the linen better. And silk is really good. I like silk best. It's strong. It's, uh, I mean, it twists up weirdly too. It's not easy to sew with, but it, it's really cool. try to thread a needle. Man, this seems awfully short. Let's go. And here we go. Hmm. <laughs> Not a whole lot to say other than I think my stitches are getting better as I go along. Which probably a reasonable thing to expect, right? But they are, they're getting nice and tight and even. think that's kind of what's going on here like this has been a pretty easy first of all it's a fun project and we just you know, we're just kind of goofing around here making pirate flags there's no real need for them or anything but but it's kind of fun to just hey, you know what i want to make something high quality just for fun um but i did just spend a couple weeks making a revolutionary war tent to a pretty exacting standard and so all of that, by the, end, by the time I was done, I was, you know, I've made it before. So I am kind of an expert in it. 
close to that. You know, I've got a lot to learn, but I'm pretty good at it. Um, and by the end of it, it was, you know, there's certain things that you uh, sharpen. I have. So, so I guess picking this up right away, because my intention after that was to go into the studio and just paint for a few weeks. I've got some landscape paintings and pictures of George Washington I've been trying to finish up and uh, I went in there for so I finished the tent shipped it and then I went in the studio I think one maybe two nights and then uh, then this came up and I was like yeah I'll, okay I'll put that down I'll do this and uh, so I'm still kind of hot from sewing so much you know I think this is actually a pretty good timing for this thing to come along. There's something on the radar. Pin. I just brewed a pot of coffee, threw a shot of rum in a mug, and a little milk, and coffee. And I don't know what to call it, but it's pretty good. Friday night, selling a pirate flag. There are worse places to be in the world. see one person in the uh, watching the stream and I don't know if that's what's her name or someone else. She never chats, so there's no way to really know. But uh, since there's nobody here, I may just start listening to uh, EBS or somebody. I know what I sound like and what I think. I think I'm going to add that to my channel description. That's uh, that's pretty funny. That's cool.
Hmm. All right, so that's kind of cool. So I really didn't think this would take this much time today. I don't know why. I mean, I knew how much there was to sew, but this in my mind, I didn't really. I think I also didn't count on being so uh, using so many tight stitches. I think you know, once I started looking now at the original, I was like, man, these things are pretty closely spaced and they're kind of neatly done. And, you know, they pass through the reinforcer a certain way. And so I guess after a while, it was inevitable that it would take longer. But I didn't really change my estimate of how much time it would take. So I guess it's reasonable, but it's a little surprising. I figured that I'd be done with the, this part this afternoon. I mean, I am going to finish it up tonight because I, I want the uh, the bodies of the flags ready to die. Uh, I was really going to do them today, but I don't think I'm going to get to it today because I've still got another, uh, another well, that that much, slightly over a foot. It's about 14 inches, I guess, something like that. Um, on this one, and then I have the whole side of one more to do. So there's a little overly optimistic in my estimate of how long it would take, but that's all right. I'll get it done. When it's done, it's going to be rad, so I don't care. Hi, Scout. Where's your ball? Do you have your ball? These, I mean, those are nice, actually. Almost time for a new thread. Thank you. Oh, she found the string on the end of the flag. So. This is so fascinating to look at. It's a great mystery. done with this. And again, by reading, look at that. Just cruising right along. I'm already starting to think ahead to how I'm going to scuff this up and maybe even fade it a bit. Bead it. I want, I want these to have a little wear to them. I don't want it to look too clean. I made a... Uh, hunting shirt for someone one time, which is a kind of a fringe jacket worn by a lot of the American soldiers during the revolution and uh, made it for, for, for a kid. He was like, all right, go, go play out in the woods with it. His mother was, oh no, we're gonna keep that nice and clean. Like, go roll around in the mud, dude. These are, these are designed to be used. They don't look right if they're too clean. They were clean and new at one time, but then they got some wear on them, so we'll get some wear on them. This, this kind of stuff never looks quite right until it is worn a bit, um, you know, because all the curves settle in, and, um, you know, part of what makes it interesting and useful is uh, seeing how it wears and how it conforms to the body of the person wearing it, and the activity that they're doing while they're wearing it. That's what makes it an interesting art, I think, not just the fact of it fresh off the... Taylor's bench. So, left over right. And right over left. Right? Yeah. Okay, I'm trying. I'm 
and now I can get this thing out of there. There we go. Right? Now, lock it down. We're good. Whew! Ouch! I think I want to come up with a uh, video intro for my live streams. Just watching the Jack Show last night. Um, and, uh, Legal Vices this afternoon. We had a pretty cool animated countdown. I think it'll dress it up a bit. Make the, make the videos a little bit more entertaining. Counterbalance the Okay, watch the, uh, <laughs> look, 10,000 stitches, all the same if they're done right. You know, liven it up a bit. What do you think? It makes it, make for a more interesting show. There we go. Some playing in the background, like so, you know, like, a, like in this case, like a montage of pirate, pirate stuff. Oh, you know, I, I was thinking earlier, I wonder if I could run Unreal Live in the background of this. I don't know if my video card can handle it. We've got an ancient, uh, an ancient video card, so it may not be able to run it efficiently. Because of uh, running OBS, and, you know the, that's the streaming software I'm using right now. Plus the graphics program, plus you know, so many people get enough uh, souped up power. Although I could, I could do something like that. I could make a video loop. I could render the loop out of Unreal and just turn that into a short video clip, which this. Which OBS can run, and that's what I use for my uh, uh, going to get coffee streaming uh, little background thing. It'll run a, run a video clip and some audio there, so I can just have a loop of. Uh, I could I could just come up with some different loops for that purpose. It might be fun. Maybe I'll do that. I mean, hell, it's Friday. Time to turn over some new ideas in my head. Maybe a few innovations here. Just. I'm just going to incrementally try to improve the quality of my videos and, and the channel itself. So, let's see what I can do about that. Besides, while I'm so maybe I've got room to think about that sort of thing. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see the little cat over there. Let me turn the camera. She's checking out this engraving, I think. Can you see her? Seems fascinated. So we'll just watch her watching the picture. It might be her shadow she's looking at. She's also fascinated by shadows. Thanks, Cal. You can 
see what I'm, I mean, you know what I'm doing. It's the same thing I've been doing for hours. So we'll watch her for a while. She's more interesting. This thread is desperate to tangle up and tie a knot just at the last few inches here. I'm not having it. Just hand it almost done. Just, just go on for another inch and a half, two inches.
fish hook. Get a couple of loops through there. There we go. Awesome. Another one down. Blinding fast speed. So here we go. Let's check this one out. Oof. I'm just a lot of times when I'm doing seams like this, I'll run my thumb and forefinger over the over the seam after I've done the grease. I do it more often than this, but um, it just helps even out some of the stitches. Um, I don't know. You know, anyway, I do it. That's what we check that shit out, man. That is cool. Oh. I think you can see this here. Let me stand back. even stitching. Strong. It's reinforced. I've got my messenger line through here so I can pull the rope in, which I still have to do tonight. But now I've got two of these ready. I've got one more. One more to sew. Uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The, the reinforcing band on. And we're ready to go. Hey, sweetheart. This is a shorter one. I saved this one for dessert. Because I figured that long one would be a chore. Which it kind of was. It wasn't that bad. But, um, it would be some, you know, it's not nothing. Um, so. sure that it actually did. I think that might have been the shadow of the string in there. Um, and even if there is a little bit of space, you know, like an eighth of an inch between the end of the flag and the end of the, and the crease in the reinforcement band, I think that would be okay because it'll, because uh, um, the rope is going in there. And, and I think that'll maybe just make a little room for the rope. Maybe it won't be a problem. We'll leave this here for a second. Put my string in. Um, I'm going to tuck those pin. I need to steam the pin and then I'll tuck them in. And, um, and this thing is ready to stitch. Heats up. I am going to uh, indulge. In a break here. Let's see here. So this should just take a minute to get that all 
Okay. Again, I didn't adjust the camera so you can't see the iron board. But you can't really see it from here anyhow, so I apologize again. But, you know, I think I'm done making apologies. This is what you got. Best I got. The best camera and audio setup I have. And best knowledge I have of how to use it. So what you see is what you got. Back in my really beautiful desk today. Right? So... You see all these people on live streams, everybody's got those fancy uh, uh, embroidered chairs and you know, I don't know if they're any good for you or how they are good to sit in. This one looks like crap, but it is real comfortable and it's lasted me about 15 years, so no complaints about it. Um, it has served well. I think I'm gonna enjoy this coffee here for a minute and then uh, I'm gonna iron the ends of those, tuck them under, pin them, pin them, tuck them under the end, then iron it, then pin the whole thing, and then it's it's all ready to stitch up, and that'll uh, I think that'll actually go pretty quickly, um, and then that's all of the flags built, ready for dyeing, um, and uh, application of the skull and crossbones, and the and they're. Oof. We're past the whole tedious part. I think everything from this point forward, this was, well, once I'm done with this one. And it's not even that tedious. It's kind of fun to do this, this sort of uh, uh, reinforcing just because it's it's kind of instant gratification. As you go, you just see it get more and more complete. So that's kind of kind of gratifying. But um, but we now have, have a couple. I have two finished nice flags. And they're French flags <laughs> at the moment, but they're going to be, uh, they're going to be pretty cool pirate flags. And then, uh, but after this, it's all cool stuff. It's like I'm gonna I'm gonna splice the uh, eyes into uh, the ropes that you know to attach the flag to a halyard or a, you know so you can hang it from the flagpole um, or your sloop um, or even a canoe, I guess. Um, and uh, apparently, canoes were one of the most popular vessels for pirates in the 1720s and 30s. Um, but we're almost there. So we're getting up to the point where it's lots of cool stuff. I had to do all the tedious stuff to get to this point, but it's, uh, it's always fun to reach that stage. Tent making is kind of like that too. It's, it's like 75% uh, preparation and tedium, and then all of a sudden you've got something that looks really good. And I think that's how this one's going to go too. Someone on the internet just asked a question that I don't know the answer to. What can fiction accomplish that poetry cannot or does not? That's not a picture I needed to see. That is, that's a cool one. There's this guy, he's a, scrolling through Twitter or X right now, and there's, I follow a bunch of artists on there from all over. Most of them seem to be Canadian and English and American. Um, there's this Canadian guy and like every other picture he posts I hate I don't like the colors I don't like the way he painted it I don't like anything about it at all and then well okay so two out of three I don't like uh, I shouldn't say I hate but I don't like him at all and then every third picture he posts I just think is beautiful I can't figure it out usually if I like an artist's work I like a lot of his work you know but this guy is um He's more missed than hit, but his hits are really good. Like, you know, I don't know, I don't know what his deal is, but oh, that's cool. And then this other dude posts. Uh, um, he just put up this Trump lawyer. It's uh, PP underscore Rubens. He posts the stuff I really like, which is like 17th, 18th, 16th century stuff. And uh, he just posted this Trump lawyer. It's just really, really. 
I like just about all of those. Whew. All right, man. So I think my break's about over. I'd rather sit here and scroll through Twitter and X and uh, drink coffee all night. But it is Friday night, so it's time to work. Got to make a pirate flag, man. We got uh, the seven seas to conquer. So, let's get back on here. I mean, nobody's watching my stream, but in the expectation that somebody does watch this after I've posted it, you know, when the stream ends, it goes to the archive and you can, people can watch it whenever they like. Um, I should make it useful for them. I think I'm going to try to go back, and I tried to do this the other day and I couldn't figure it out, but there's in YouTube Studio, which is the editing thing that's kind of built into YouTube, they have this thing that looks like I can chop out all the dead space where I'm just sitting here drinking coffee and goofing off. Um, I can cut that out so it's just all hot sewing action. And I think I want to try that. Um, I'm probably, maybe I'll sit down with it tomorrow. Maybe once I, you know what, maybe I'll do that once I get the flags done. How about that? I'll try to figure that out and I'll chop out all the dead space. Um, so here we go. All right, my, my thing up. Maybe. All right. Oh, shit. Sorry, cat. Don't get underfoot. That's, you only have like two rules. One of them is don't get underfoot. Here, sweetheart. You okay? Come here. You all right? to the ends. And again, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just making it up. So I'm just telling you how I do it. Uh, so I pin the ends and then I pin the center and then I split the difference and pin there. And then, so it looks like it needs a couple more. I split those divisions too. It seems to, it seems to work pretty well.
never made a flag before, so I really genuinely don't know what I'm doing other than I'm just kind of using the techniques that I use to make tents and Revolutionary War clothing and uh, paintings and drawings and other stuff I've made in the past. Uh, I'm just kind of applying them to this other thing. I'm trying to channel Betsy Ross, but like a piratical. Betsy Ross the Betsy Ross the pirate. It's funny, you know, with Washington and Adams and Jefferson and uh, Molly Pitcher, Elizabeth Zane, all the other historical figures from that time look like. But I don't know what Betsy Ross looked like. Whew. Uh, where's my needle? I've got my needle, my thread, my scissors. Good, got it all. I've got to listen to something here. This, I'm starting to flag. This is, um, I don't know why. It's, you get going on it, and it doesn't, this isn't, I mean, I've done hard physical work a lot, and uh, this is not hard physical work, but it takes a, it may be that it takes a lot of concentration, and that just, just zaps me sometimes. Thinking is hard. All right. So here we go, we got another flag, right? And again, I'm certain, I've got the, this is the, Front, I'm calling this the front, um, just because of the way the hem is folded. I've got the hem folded toward what I'm calling the back. Um, it's an obverse and reverse. Do they do that? That's like in coins, but do they, they, do, they do that for flags too? Is that, is that how they call flags, sides? Anyway, that's what I'm doing. Whew. All right, let's tie this thing on. That's another song I want to hear too. What's her, uh, I forget her name. There's this folk singer from, I think she was English. English or Welsh or Irish or something. Um, it's Tie Up Your Ends. She's talking about this it's this song about this chick. It's from the 60s, I think, but it's, it's a song written as if it's like from the, and it might have been, maybe, maybe it is an older song, but like sometime during the Industrial Revolution, so maybe the 19th century, England, I guess. You know, some girl in a factory where they're making stuff and singing about tie up her ends. And so it's a sweet song. It's really pretty. It's kind of sad, but. But then again, I mean, working is hard. Everybody works hard. You know? Well, not everybody works hard, but <clears throat> lots of people do. And they don't all bitch about it. To be, there's a certain kind of person who bitch too much about. Oh, this poor person has to work hard. What I'd like to know is where the song is about the coal miners and guys who actually are doing dangerous. You know, what about those dudes in the uh, like in the oil rigs? You ever watch one of them? Holy cow! It's like hard work with a higher chance of getting crushed, I think. There was a John Wayne movie about them. What was that called? It was like Hellcats or something. I only saw it once a years ago on, I think on Turner Classic Movies. I think often when they make movies like that, they are, uh, like they're trying to recruit guys for those jobs. Like, I didn't even know you could have that much danger in your job. I want that. It's like Top Gun is a recruiting movie for naval aviation. And I have a friend who just retired as a fire captain after a quarter century of service. And he and I, when we were young men, went to see Backdraft with um, Kurt Russell and Scott Carpenter and I think that's the guy's name. A couple other people. And uh, I think it changed his life. About the same time we saw, well, at some point within a couple of years of that, we also saw Dances with Wolves, which changed mine. It's 
funny how popular culture and art influence what we do in our lives. So. All right, we're off to a good start here. My pins are holding, my knot is holding, and my stitches are. Oop. Except for that one, my stitches are good. Let's come through here. Let's check the back. Ooh, the back looks even better than the front. Look at that. All right, not embarrassing. But I'll take it. <clears throat> it's strong and not embarrassing. That's going to be my motto for this project. I'm trying to make a flag that, if it actually flew aboard a pirate ship. None of the guys aboard or who were the targets of it would blink an eye at it. So, yep, that's just a normal contemporary pirate flag. It's my little time machine. We're just making time machines, that's all I do. I make time machines. Think about this the other day. My dad used to always tell me, You live in your own world. Yep. It's taken me a half century to figure out that, well, yeah, no shit. And uh, it's pretty cool, so I'm going to show everybody else what it looks like. So check out my paintings and my pirate flags, my Revolutionary War tents and stuff. Come visit my world because it's pretty cool here. Figure it's about time to uh, play to my strengths. All right, so we've got a couple inches, about three inches or so, a little bit more than that done now. Stitches are pretty even. The back is tight, looks nice. Reinforcing band is I'm glad. When I first was trying to figure this out, I was looking at the. Uh, I'm not going to change the screen image, but you can see the reinforcing band on the original. I didn't think of it at the time. In fact, I didn't think about it until I was until it was about time to start sewing. The whole time I was looking at it, I was thinking of it as a uh, like the body of the flag just folded over onto itself, kind of like, just like a really wide hem. And then the more I thought about it, it was like, that needs to be stronger. And uh, what if I just cut an extra strip and fold it over that and then stitch that on? And then you have, you know, some, some nice reinforcement. I'm really glad that it really didn't occur to me until I was actually trying to figure out how far to fold it over and all that. And just by putting this on, it, um, you know, it, it's more solid, like I can, on, on the ones that are done and even on this part that I've finished here it, it makes a difference in how strong it is so it's one of those things that I never really thought about before but it makes a lot of sense once you see it and feel it hope this works Approaching the first pin at this stage on this one, I'm just going to take all these little milestones for fun as great accomplishments. Because why not? Once this is complete, man, this is the end of the construction phase, and then it's on to um, 
what I'm thinking of is really just the embellishment stuff. Like, as soon as this is done, this flag is can be flown. You know, I mean, really as is. I mean, it's got strings on it. It's not that's not real strong, but um, then it's just a matter of basically doing this with the. I've got some hemp rope over here, um, and my plan is to uh, take the. Uh, Basically, leave it just as it is down here, and I'll put some stitches in up, up the, the length of the flag to hold it. But then at the very top, I'm going to, I think, I won't know for sure until I get to it, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch a thin piece of leather for an inch or two around here, and I'll make an eye and then splice that in and try to draw on some of my ancient Boy Scout training and uh, make a splice here and then. Uh, serve it or wrap it um, and then that can be you know hooked hooked on to a, you know the rope on a flagpole and uh, and then I guess the, the bottom is maybe you tie a hitch on there I don't know but that's that's how the original looks so you know it's got an eye at the top and then a loose rope at the base so um, I'm guessing that's how they did it and so I'm just gonna copy it and maybe we'll learn something about about how they did things back then but so I'm gonna just put an eye in it and then there so really once this is done like you could tie this onto a rope and fly this thing if you wanted to surrender we don't want to surrender them we want to maraud hostis humanis generi enemies of all mankind and i need to uh, i'm going to pull this out and let this untangle this damn thread man and i do not like that twisting but that's just i guess it just goes with the territory I think I may, might get more visitors to my uh, live stream if I get a thumbnail that has like pirate chicks in bikinis. So maybe I should learn to use AI and do that. Or maybe I'll paint, how about that? Maybe I'll just paint one. I am a painter after all. So I need uh, I need some buxom pirate models. And I'll put those as my thumbnails and see if that draws traffic to the stream. What do you think? Maybe. Of course, then once they got here, it'd have to be interesting. And so there's that, but it's a start. You know? Like every layer needs something interesting. So maybe if I make a good thumbnail and then have some good content and something interesting to do and to look at and listen to while you're here. There's a lot to, uh, to this stuff. I've been listening to YouTube and watching YouTube stuff for years. I listen to a lot of stuff while I work. You know, repointing our... Uh, foundation this summer had stuff on all the time and you know I was learning how to fix you know, this brick it was all deteriorated and stuff and there's this guy out of Pennsylvania Mike Haddock he's got this uh, YouTube channel where he talks about how to do different kinds of masonry and brick and stuff he's been in it for I don't know since like 1969 so the dude knows what he's doing and more than that he, uh, he knows how to describe it in such a way that a guy like me, who has never done it before, I was able to fix a brick wall. And uh, I was just out, actually, I was just out there looking at it earlier today, and uh, I can hardly believe it. I mean, so I listen to stuff all the time. I don't really watch. And I saw some study of something, people were talking about the audio component is more important than the visual stuff. Um, and they gave some percentage, but you know, I, mean, I don't know that the percentage is measurable or that it matters. But um, I will say that for me, it's probably close to 90, 95% of, at least while I'm working on something. Um, you know, sometimes I will watch a video, but most of the time, if I'm working, I'm just listening. I never even know what the images are unless it's something like with that brickwork. I watched them and then I listened to them while I was, you know, I put it on a watch at once so I know what the visuals are, but then. You know, while I'm working, I'll listen to that and then some other ones. Oh. I never had any idea how much goes into 
doing this kind of thing. There's a lot to it. I've got a newfound respect for all these guys who kept me entertained and taught me how to fix plumbing and uh, brick and do joinery. And, you know, I'm not any, you know, I wouldn't say I'm very good at it, but I have learned some, learned some things, you know. I'd add plastering, but I haven't actually put that to practical use yet. I've got a bunch of plaster to fix here once I get all my, these other projects out of the way a little bit later this winter or early spring. Um, I've been watching plastering videos and listening to them, but I haven't tested it, so I don't know if they work. But the brickwork stuff I really can attest to, and uh, some of the woodwork and plumbing. Uh, I found a couple of plumbing videos that helped me fix some things. So they're just really helpful. It's a great invention. You know, some of them, it's almost like, you know, back in the old days, you had to, you know, kind of look over the shoulder of somebody who knows what they're doing and they can show you. Well, here you could do that, but you're separated in space and time. He only has to do the job once and show you, you know, and then, you know, you can rewatch it. And it's a great invention. I'm not crediting YouTube with that, but I'm just saying, you know, it's like the invention of writing and then video and all that stuff. There's a lot of, a lot of different people contributed to it, but um, it's very, very useful. Okay, so we're coming toward the end of this thread, so we're going to have to string up a new one in a couple minutes here. But this is going nicely. Just cruising right along. And this is a shorter side than the one we just did prior to this, so like I said before, this is sort of the dessert one. We'll get a quick win on this one and then we'll dance for joy for a minute because this is, uh, whew, then this is all three of them uh, built. And then it's all fun from here on out. I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to doing the skulls and crossbones I haven't decided yet how to do that. I want to look back. I want to look at that image again and see. Um, I don't know whether I should sew them on and then paint them. I was thinking about it. Um, my inclination is to sew them on and then paint them. But I was just thinking, I don't know if uh, maybe I should paint the fabric before I sew them on. And I wonder if maybe I can, I don't know if I can tell by looking at it. Maybe with the crossed bones, it'll give me some clues to how it was done originally. And I kind of want to try to do things in the order I think they were done in the first place. Um, you know, I don't know if the... Because I plan to use a fairly thinned down ivory black, which was to period correct color and paint at the time. You know, it's basically just you know, you burn bone or uh, at the time sometimes ivory. Um, Really, there are a lot of different black pigments in use of, you know, in the 18th century, but that's you know, that's one of them, bone black, ivory black. Um, so you know, I've got some, I've got some dry pigment, and I also have, uh, you know, a, a tube of I think Windsor Newton um, oil paint. It's basically just the pigment or soot or something, plus uh, uh, linseed oil usually or walnut oil, you know, just the different things you can use, but. Um, in this case, I'm going to, I think, just take some of the tube ivory black and thin it with a bit of uh, turpentine because this stuff on that drawing, I want to see if I can bring that up. I like looking at these, but I want to see this thing real quick. Um, but you look at it, and it looks to me like this stripe, this is the clue here to me. Excuse me. This stripe on the shadow, like there's a shadow here that runs down this bone. I think that was painted before it was stitched on. Because you don't see any of this paint over here. I don't think I do. I don't see any of this paint going up onto this crossed bone. And I think it would be very difficult. Well, because of these strokes, these brush strokes to me look like they were applied like slashes. You know, that's... that's uh, it's not really an unsure hand who did that. And it's it's a pretty solid like stripe 
and then I think he maybe went over it a couple of times because it looks kind of dense here and then there's a thinner clearly delineated extra stroke here so I think he probably went down at once and then a little little deepening there a little deepening there but it extends here the depth of that extends up here so I think this was probably painted before it was sewed on um, the advantage of doing that might also be well first of all like places like this well here you go well you know, this might be a clue that was painted once it was attached because it doesn't quite go to the edge you see that unless they painted it then cut it out and stitched it down and just used the paint as the guide I don't know or the out we probably drew a pencil outline or something but looks to me like it might have been painted before which would give you a chance to dry it and stuff too you know before you put it on I don't know so I haven't made that decision I'm just gonna goof around with it and we'll see what happens I want to go back to my pirate flags just because they're kind of kind of rad well, let's see maybe we got some other pirate pictures what do we got um, it's under flags what do I have in archive anything cool I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, we could go through the Bray album. That's pretty cool. It's not piracy per se, but um, what's this one? <laughs> That's a fun, fun picture. Um, A Suriname planter. Yeah, why not? It's Friday night. We'll party. This dude's looking dapper. Um, so I need to. Oh, you know what? That's an easier way to bring these up, too. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'll do that. That's just such a cool picture. This is uh, Sandby, I think. Um, we're going to do that. In fact, I'm going to move my camera up the. Thing up to the top just so we can see that because that's a that's a nice picture I want I want to see a nice picture there how about that put that there and we'll do this we'll do that what do you think does that work yeah so all right where's my new thread Be immersed in the uh, in the past for the evening while I stitch this stuff up. <clears throat> A little bit of beeswax. Ah, no, 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 cut through it. It's a heck of a pipe he's got there.
Okay, we're coming up to the next uh, pin. <clears throat> Another mile marker. Whew. over here and I can just drop them in there and I'll have to scoop them all up at the end. How about that? Let's do that. Everything after this stage, I'm, I'm a third of the way done with this one, with the construction of this this one that I'm selling. Where's the camera? Uh, with this one. As soon as that's complete, man, I am, uh, it's all fun from here. It's all cool stuff. It's the, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, I'm just kind of scrolling through here looking at old stuff. Mm -hmm. See if I can find something cool. Um, well, I don't know. Let's, I'm not finding many um, pirate type things. We'll just go back to the flight. I do want to look at this again, anyhow. Um, everything after this stage, this is all kind of mechanical. This is cool. But after this, it's actual real cool stuff. I'm, I'm doing the rope, which is going to be fun because I like splicing and. And it'll be fun to figure that out, and that's kind of cool. And then it's done, and that, that's a neat thing. Um, and then it's painting a skull and crossbones and cutting it out and sewing it on to the flag, which is cool. So, like, all the, the sort of mechanical foundation stuff is done now. Or, you know, we'll be in, in a, I don't know, an hour. I don't know how long this is going to take, but however long that takes. Once that's complete, then, then it's all, like, cool shit from here. So I'm pretty excited about it. Um, so I think I want to, um, I need to figure out how I'm going to do that. Am I going to paint it and then cut it out and, uh, um, what do, you, what do you say? You know what, they have a black version of this that they color corrected. I want to take a look and see what they thought of it. Um, see that's what their estimation of what it looked like originally is. Like it was darker and more intense. Um, so, I mean, right there, that's kind of a cool flag, man. I'd like to, you know, can I get a version of this without the, um, how about this? You know what, open this up, I want to pull, um, Wait, why is that not, uh, oh, you know what, View. yeah, you know what, I want a version of this with a black background, how about that, here we go, um, edit, copy, edit, paste this new layer, and then let's just flood it with black, All right, no, undo, and select all. Fill the whole layer, selection, select none. And then let's just drag this down here, right? So, wow, save as. Black fill, because why not? Save, all right, so yes, I do want to save like that. Come on. Do, 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 do. All right, so now I can just um, yeah, full screen preview. Right, so now I can look at it and it's a little less distracting. But what, what I want to decide is do I paint it now or do I paint it once it's painted onto the flag? And I think I should, my, my concern with painting it once it's sewed on, and I don't really care, I mean, as, as a painter, I don't care, except. That looks kind of thin, and so I'm going to need to thin that paint down. And when I do that, it may tend to bleed through, and I don't want to do that. I don't want it to show up in places where I don't want it. So I think if I paint it on, and maybe so, and I've got some, I've got a ton of stretchers. Um, so I think maybe what I should do is take 
put together some stretcher bars. I've got some big ones too, you know, and, and they're I mean, they're nice, high quality, sturdy ones. Um, I might set up a stretcher frame and um, stretch the material that I want to cut these skulls and bones out of onto stretcher bars, and then I just paint it on there. I mean, maybe uh, um, maybe I'll, I, I can do that because it's going to take a it'll, it'll take a little bit of time to dry it's oil paint so i mean it's not it's not, not going to take forever but, you know it might be a day or two to dry so i need to think about that for a minute and by a minute i mean i need to think about it for a while um this flag is cool it's gonna be neat um i don't know I don't know. I'm just kind of sitting and resting at the moment anyway. Um, no, I don't have anything I have to do at the moment. This is all for fun. And, uh, so I'll give it some thought. We'll see what we're doing. I'm just going to sit here and party on a Friday night, right? And by party, I mean we're making a freaking pirate flag. How cool is that? It's pretty cool. That's how cool. Yeah, here's the, uh, I was talking about painters I follow on Twitter. Here's another one. This chick is in Wales, and she paints the most depressing damn landscapes, and they're just beautiful. And she uh, she made a post uh, a few weeks ago. Somebody asked her, you know, why she was, why they all look like that. She's like, it's what it looks like here. And I've seen photos, and I don't think she's wrong. And there's, so she somehow makes, and they even look like where I live, you know, at different times in the winter. Um. But she's, she's got an eye, man. They, they look really cool. Whew. And then there's guys like this one. I mean, this, this stuff is just magic. There's some contemporary painters today who are just bosses. I look at them and I'm like, man, I, I have to, I've had to work really hard to learn how to paint. And I see these guys and I know they work hard and I don't mean to take anything away from them, but they're, they're guys with a, uh, with a natural talent and they're rare and there are a few of them out there and they, they make magic. And I think part of that is they're just free. They don't, they're uninhibited. The way they paint, they're just directly translating what they see onto the canvas. And it's, it's a beauty to behold. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Listen to it. I need to listen to something cool, man. I've got to have a rhythm here <clears throat> or something interesting. There's a bit of stimulation because there's nobody in the chat talking, so I've got no inspiration from chat. And uh, I've exhausted my ability to amuse myself.
<laughs> Wrecked him. Damn near killed him. All right, man. I need something cool to listen to. Give me something. Give me something to ride on. What's on? See, the trouble is, I want to use my phone to monitor my stream in case somebody comes in and chats. Because hey, who knows? Maybe they will. It's not likely, but it could happen. I don't want to miss them. Um, and that phone is connected. My old phone doesn't connect. I don't know. Why? Oh, because they took the chip out or something. I don't know. Maybe they did. I don't know if they did or not. When I, whatever. When I got my new phone, they, I don't know. this one doesn't seem to work. I guess it works for a camera. Oh, here we go. It's kind of working. Not interested in that. Not interested in that. I need something cool to listen to. stream again just in case the off chance that somebody is here live nope nobody's here not even me all right I'm here that's it now I need something to listen to what is that I'll use headphones. That way YouTube doesn't have any complaint about my stream. And it'll keep me amused. Sewing. So I'm almost done with this thing. I'm going to finish this fucker up pretty soon here. So let's get rolling. We got always a bad headphone, man. There we go. I suppose I could listen to it. There, there we go. All right. All right. Here we go. Whew. All right. Let's sew like the wind. No crap. Here we go. All right, back to it.
Okay, another pin pull. Oops. Hmm. That doesn't sound fun. Phew. All right. Hmm. Hmm. 
this is stupid. Okay, enough, enough, enough. It's just dumb, dude. Um, Again, the camera's back up. I really got to get better at that. You think? Stop it. Okay. Whew. All right. Hey, we passed the halfway point.
Oops. Hmm. Hmm. Holy cow, that's cool.
Okay, let's pull this. Thank you, I did a thing on that guy. <laughs> what the hell? No, no, no. Come on, man. We're almost there. Don't tangle up. Hmm. No, 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 no. Do not tangle. Come on, dude. We're almost there. Just there you go. No, 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 no. Damn it. Come on, dude. Do not tangle. We're almost done. Motherfucker. Come on. Damn it. Ah, oh, I hate it. Fuck. Damn it. Ouch.
that's awful. That's awful. God bless you. Hmm. Oh, that's sad, man. Parker Solar Probe went super fast. Yep. Ah, damn. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, there we go. We have three flags, man. Ta-da. All right. Awesome. I'm going to put this thread on here just so I can keep track of this thing. stream ever. I'm going to turn off the uh, sound here. Anybody comes in, say hi in the chat and I'll, uh, I'll turn sound back on and talk, but till then I'm just going
All right, well, I'm going to take a break for a few minutes, and uh, I'll be back on in a bit, and I'm going to carry on. So, GG, see you soon.